Okay, well, welcome. Um, thank you so much for carving out some time from your busy day to attend our session this evening. Um, I know many of you, but for those of you who don't know me, my, I'm Joyce Schroeder and I'm a resident of Heritage Village, but I'm also a volunteer with Sustainable Southbury. And we're here tonight to tell you about a program that we're really excited about, which is doing food scrap recycling at the transfer station. So I'd like to turn it over to my associates who will be doing the presenting and maybe you can introduce yourself as you speak. Hi. Oh, yeah, so you can all hear me well, right? Okay, wonderful. This is very loud. So I'm Chuck. I'm from Sustainable South. Very, how's everyone doing tonight? So as Joyce said, we're really, really excited about this new program. We've been working on it for a while with the town to try and get it started. And it's going to be a new food scrap recycling program at the town transfer station. It's a town program. We asked the Heritage Village Management if we could come here and get the word out to you as well. And so here we are. So we're here to just give you some more information about that. You can see this is Sustainable South Prairie, and we're involved in many different things. But here tonight, we're here to just talk about food scrap recycling. Uh, we basically work on a wide variety of different sustainability items. <coughs> Now, this presentation, as you can see, is being filmed, so it'll be available via the normal Heritage Village channels afterwards. We hope to also post the video on our Sustainable South Prairie website, sustainablesouthprairie.org. You can find us there. Uh, we're going to have a short presentation, and then we'll follow up with mostly a Q&A session. And if anybody wants to buy these food scrap recycling kits we'll tell you about, uh, we'll be selling them here later on in the, in, after the presentation. Um, yeah, and we'll send out the slides and the recording after the event um, to the extent that we have all your information to send it to you. If not, we can explore how we get it out uh, via the normal Heritage Village channels. So we have two great speakers tonight. We have Fagwa, who's going to tell you a little bit more about why this is such an important initiative. And we have my wife, the better half of our couple, talking to you about how to get a resident kit and some volunteer opportunities that we have. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Fagwa. All right, so why should we food, uh, recycle food scraps? Sustainable Southbury is guiding the town of Southbury in, re in reducing the tonnage of trash that the town pays to haul away. One way to do that is to remove food waste. If you, you know, you realize how heavy your trash is when you bring it out after a big meal, um, food waste is wet and heavy. Food waste is one of the largest components of trash haul to landfill where the decomposition creates methane gas, which contributes to greenhouse gases, which contributes to climate change. If it's incinerated, it's really hard to incinerate a big, heavy, wet, uh, it's really hard to incinerate, sorry about that. Did you all hear me? Yes. <laughs> it's really hard to incinerate uh, heavy, wet food. It uses more fossil fuel to get that burned up. And the less we burn, obviously, the cleaner our air is. So what we're doing is we are actually paying a hauler to come to the South Bay Transfer Station, pick up the bins, these bigger bins that you'll dump your smaller bins into, and they bring it to New Milford Farms, which is a commercial composter, or Quantum Power, which is in Sun Southington, which is an anaerobic um, composter, which that gas can also be used as a power source. Um, Advance to the next slide, please. Many towns in Connecticut have created food scrap recycling or composting pilot programs at their landfills. Our pilot program is being funded by us for the first year. Uh, we received grants, we wrote and received grant, grants for this. Um, and the whole goal is to get enough families in Southbury to um, recycle their food scraps, which then, of course, reduces the tonnage. Um, some of it is made into animal food. It's not yet, but our hauler may be uh, using a facility that turns it into animal food. 
Um, Helena will tell you more about what can be added to the food scrap recycling. Um, we are not going to be composting at the transfer station at this point. Okay, we're just following it away. Our hauler is curbside compost, um, and they're already working with us on a restaurant food scrap recycling program for five restaurants that we're sponsoring in town. So we're working hard. <laughs> so gone are the days of throwing away your trash and not giving it a second thought. I mean, we all know that. You either have to look at it, are we recycling this? Are we throwing it away? Or now are we gonna take our food scraps and recycle them? Um, I'm gonna give you a quote from the Connecticut Insider dated October of 2022. The most recent study shows that 41% of residential waste is organic, either food scraps or yard waste, which can be converted to energy through anaerobic digestion, aerobic digesting, which is composting, or processing to animal feed. Food scraps alone represent 22% of residential trash and are among the heavier materials regularly thrown away. Removing them from the waste stream reduces the cost of disposal as municipalities pay by weight. And now I'll let you take over. All right, next slide. All right, so I'm, my name's Helena, as Chuck said, I'm his wife. Um, I, am, I am a registered dietitian, so I am all about food and even food waste. Um, in order to get uh, participate in this program, um, these, we have some simple steps that are up here on the slide. Um, the first step is you can buy a starter kit from Sustainable Southbury uh, and also learn about the program. So Chuck gave you all handouts today that talks a little bit about the program. And on there is a website that you can go to for more information. Um, the starter kit is in the picture up on the slide, but it's also down here. We have two rolls of biodegradable bags, small ones for the little container and big ones for the large container. It has the small countertop container that is um, really nice for your, you know, you could keep it on your kitchen counter or you could keep it under your sink perhaps. Sorry. It has a ventilated lid so humidity doesn't build up so it doesn't smell as bad as, as if it doesn't. Um, then we have this, this, when this small container gets filled, then you can dump it into your large container. Which has, has a, a latch that really latches and it also comes with a lock, they call it an animal lock. But we're just kind of selling it as a, if this tips over in your car, it's an anti-spill lock. And it, and it has a handle. So once you have, you don't have to buy a kit. You can, maybe you have containers already at home that would work for you, that's fine. All we ask is that, and you can, or you either yes or no, don't have to use these biodegradable bags. You can just not use a bag at all. Um, but we're asking that there's no plastic in the, in the food. So we'll take food, any kind of food, any, I don't know how else to say that. Any kind of food. Yes, we take animal, we take meat. Um, actually, one guy asked me today if we would take roadkill. I said, no. <laughs> Please don't pick up dead squirrels from the road. But um, I hadn't thought of that. But bones, um, the pit from your avocado, you know, all the things that you think, or, or leftovers from your dinner, um, bread, any kind of food, but just food. Um, so now you'll save your food scraps in either container or whatever container you're using. And then you can bring them to the transfer station um, in the recycling area. There will be bins, if you're familiar with the recycling area. Um, at the far left are the fabric um, recycling. The Bay State has bins for clothing and shoes and, and worn clothing um, that they recycle. So left on the left hand side of that there will be bins. But we'll have signs to food scrap recycling. We'll probably have a tent there for a while, um, and we're going to try to be there um, and helping people and answer questions. Um, let's see what else. 
we um, are selling these kits for $35. We bought them in bulk. I say we, Chuck, <laughs> bought them in bulk, and we're just selling them at cost. So we're not making any money on this, but it's a really nice, Especially the travel bin is really nice, so it's you know it's a nice, it's a good one. That thing will work really well. Um, we have a small guide, a little brochure that if you want to participate, you can have the guide. It just has more information, you know, a lot of words about the program, how much how much food scraps do people generally collect, you know, have or different places to store them where animals won't get in them. Um, and then we have a website that Chuck's already mentioned, but um, we have, we'll keep updates there and we have information about all of our programs there. All right, the next slide. All right, so our food scrap committee is, consists of about five people. So this is a big job. And we really do need help. If any of you are interested in volunteering or um, helping out at any of our events, we really appreciate the help. But even um, if that's a big ask, then you know you can tell your neighbors or your friends or your family about the program and kind of help us spread the word. The more that we can, um, the more people we can get participating, and the more garbage or food waste we can get out of the trash. Um, and turn it into something that's usable, usable instead of garbage, the better the program will be. We are running a 12-month pilot, so we have 12 months to, to prove that this is a, a good idea and um, that this is going to work. Okay. Do I have another slide or is that it? Oh, okay. So in June, um, we will be at the transfer station on Tuesdays and Saturdays to provide information and selling kits and helping, you know, answering questions um, about the program. And then once the food scrap collection starts, July 1st, we will try to be there um, as many days as possible. You know, theoretically every day, but probably not. Um, we'll be helping people, you know, put the food into the, the bins that are there. Not that that's hard, but we also want to keep an eye to make sure it's not getting contaminated. You know, somebody dumps a bin, you know, their bin of food, and then there's a water bottle in there, and then we gotta get that out. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know what to say. I was gonna say, don't let your kids put garbage in here. But, you know, or, or your visitors, or any neighbors. Um, we just want food. I have a question and answer. That's our short presentation. So, any questions? Nice job. president of Condo One, she has been our ardent supporter, and if she didn't help, we would not be able to have done this tonight. So thank you, Barbara.